Good morning to you all. Salam to you all. Welcome again to our discussion. Before we start, let us please close our eyes for a moment. Watching the flow of divine energy in our bodies, watching the breath keeping us alive and reminding us of the presence of the divine within us. May we be able to remember more and more the presence of God in our lives. Maybe these moments together bring more inspiration for us to proceed further, to have more discipline and more dedication in this path of evolution. Parasharya vachasaro janamala gita padandottakam Nanakya nakake saran harikata sambodana bodhitam loke sajana shapadaira araha peti yamana muda buyad barata pankajam kalimala pradvan sinasre yasi. May this lotus flower of Mahabharata, born in the lake of the words of the son of Parashara, enlarged with the nectar of Gita and fragrant with the stories of the Sri Hari. May this lotus bring joy to all the virtuous people in this world who like bees coming every day full of joy to drink this nectar and to become free from the impurities of this Kali image. You can open your eyes. Our chariot is moving forward and now we are entering into the 11th chapter. This 11th chapter is called Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga, the yoga of the cosmic form revealed. We will start. Atai Kada So, in this chapter, um, what happens? Arjuna, after listening Lord Krishna's revelations, beginning from the chapter 7 and slowly going, going to sequence chapters. In the 10th chapter, Lord Krishna reveals himself completely in the creation and explain about the prominent forms where Arjuna can see him and perceive him. And then, due to this explanation and this understanding of Arjuna about this form of all this real identity of the Lord, Lord Krishna, Lord uh, Arjuna gets eagerness to have the experience of what he has listened and what he has practiced. So he asks for Lord Krishna in this chapter, please, I understood, my doubts are clear now, but please, if I'm worried of, let me see your form. Let me see this aspect of uh, creation and dissolution that you mentioned to me in the previous chapter. So then this chapter is mainly related to the revelation of the divine form of the Lord to Arjuna, the experience itself. Um, Gurudev says that the 10th chapter is the perception of a 
of God in a microcosm form. It's like if we are looking into a micro microscope and seeing God in different parts, but like isolated, understanding God in the prominent ones, in the mountains, in the animals, in the man, in the qualities. So this is the microcosmic perception of God. And then in this chapter, chapter 11, is the macrocosmic perception of the Lord. So now it's not seeing one part of God, another part here and there. It's seeing God in a broad concept, in one place. Open the vision. It's more expanded. So Gurudev gave a beautiful definition of chapter 10 and chapter 11, the difference. The chapter 10 is the art to see God in all, in the prominent parts. And this chapter 11 is the opposite, is the art of seeing all in God. It's very subtle, the difference, but uh, it's uh, one step of another. First, Gurudev says, we have the slowly, through your practice, we develop the ability to start, start to perceive and experience God in all. And then when we deepen our meditation, slowly we can perceive all in God, inside us. So through these teachings of the Lord, through the eagerness of Arjuna, through this, his practice, putting into practice, slowly the seeker, the Arjuna, like us, start to get some experiences, to get the taste of what was heard, what was taught, and what was practiced. And this only can happen not only with our effort, but through the grace of the Lord. And this is the recognition of Arjuna in the beginning when he says, through your grace I am here, through your grace you have revealed so much to me. So if you consider me to be worthy of, and through your grace, please, now let me have the experience of what you have told me. It's nice because uh, this chapter, Arjuna speaks most. The most part of the verses is Arjuna is speaking. Similar to that, in the first chapter also is Arjuna speaking the most verses. But in the first chapter, Arjuna was speaking with ignorance. He was seeing completely distorted things with attachment, with suffering, with unwillingness to fight. And then here, he is expressing the experience. He is mature. He is now speaking from the heart in another state of mind. Then uh, it will start the experience of Arjuna in this chapter. He will start to see the cosmic form of the Lord. But before to start, this vision of Arjuna brought some aspects, different aspects, some outcomings of this vision. The first aspect that uh, it's nice for us to think a little bit, it's when the Lord Krishna says in the verse 7, he says to Arjuna, Behold now the entire universe in me, the unmanifest, the manifested, Everything is within my body. So, all in God now. But then at the end, he adds one point. And whatever else you want to see. Yesterday, I was discussing this chapter with uh, Swami Adyatman and the Jeep, And he pointed out this expression of Lord Krishna. Whatever else you want to see. What does it mean? That each individual on the spiritual path it will have a different perception and experience of the Lord. He's infinite. But our mind is still finite and we are still separate. So our experiences of the Lord, of God, will be different one to another. Whatever else you want to see, whatever desire you have in your mind to visualize inside me, let it be so. So different experience due to different 
perspectives of each person. Once there was one very high sent, highly sent, uh, speaking about Ramayana. And it says that uh, whenever someone speaks about Lord Rama, Lord Hanuma is there to listen. So this, this sage was with eyes closed and then just seen, have a vision of the place where Mother Sita was kidnapped. And then he starts to describe, oh, it's a beautiful place with the decorated white flowers. And then Hanuma said, what? He stopped the top of the, the sand and, and said, excuse me, Sadhu, this is not true. The flowers were not white. The flowers were red. And then the saint say, I'm seeing, I'm the eyes closed, I'm seeing. And then Hanuma say, yeah, you can see from here, but I was there to, rec to rescue Mother Sita. I saw the red flowers. And then they start to argue a little bit. And then they decide to call Mother Sita. And then they put the issue to Mother Sita and she say, I'm sorry to tell, but both of you are wrong. And then say, what? Yes, the flowers were blue, nor white, nor red. And then they could not find one way to decide. So then they call Lord Brahma. And then say, Lord, please help us with this issue. And then Lord Brahma say, all of you are correct. And then they say, how can it be? And then he explained. The saint who is with eyes closed seeing the, the scene, he's right because his mind is peaceful. So he saw the flower white because of his mind was white like this. Lord Hanuman saw the flowers red because when he was there to rescue Mother Sita, he was full of rage, anger. So he saw flowers red. And Mother Sita saw the flowers blue. Why? Because she was just thinking all the time in me, the Lord. So the reflection of her thoughts were in the flower. So different experience, perspective in the same object. So here the Lord is saying, my the experience of the seekers will be infinite. Each one will have a different experience of what is God. Many times, for example, when uh, we are together in, living in the ashram, Guruji comes and gives some instruction. Then after some times, people do different things with the same instruction and say, Guruji told this, and then the others say, no, he told this to do this. So it's not one teaching, different understandings from the master's of different experiences this is one aspect of this uh, cosmic form revealed another thing is a little bit forward uh, not he was only delighted and happy to see this form of the lord the whole universe in just one place but arjuna also was frightened Frightened. He was really scared and trembling. Like, oh Lord, I'm not only seeing your beautiful form. I'm seeing many people are being crushed in your teeth. You are very scary. I don't know what to do. I have no composure of mind. Because what Krishna told, I am everything. I am the destruction. I am the dissolution of everything. So it is scary. Arjuna didn't know what to do. And uh, this is also common when we come, we bring this to our spiritual path. The masters say that uh, it's common on the spiritual journey. Even if you know what is going to happen, if you read, but it's common to have uh, some fearful experiences during our growth. And this brings sometimes insecurity in our journey, even in spite of master saying, go ahead, go ahead, nothing to fear, but still then, it's something that may happen. I think most of you may remember this story of Guruji saying in the beginning of his spiritual practice, he starts to, to experience that his head was growing 
so much so he was really scared of his head being exploded so then he was stopping to meditate so it's common and if the people has no knowledge or has no assurance for someone about this he gave up the path so arjuna starts to pray please come back to your real form i'm really scared of that it's normal on the spiritual path when we start to have experiences also some experiences of growth of something like i'm dying to bring fear in us but there is nothing to fear yesterday we mentioned about one example of swami vivekananda seeing god everywhere he also had had the experience of fear once ramakrishna also lord sri ramakrishna touched him and then while being conscious of his body he loses the consciousness of his head and then he starts to shout in fear and terror i lose my head i'm going to die i don't know what happens please someone help me i have family i have to take care of my parents someone please help me and sri ramakrishna just laughing and say let him have a little bit more experience then he will come back then he touched him again he came back from that uh, strange experience fearful i lose my head so here lord we can understand that uh, in the spiritual path we have few experiences and some of them may bring some insecurity in us but nothing to fear we should go ahead another aspect of this chapter is beautiful also when the lord krishna is explaining to arjuna during his during his vision that uh, see all the warriors that you are here in front to fight and even on your side they are being killed by me they are being crushed by me so arjuna do not think that you are killing someone that you are fighting just be my instrument stand up and do your job fight because even if you do not fight these warriors from your side and from the enemy side they will have their they will meet their end so be an instrument and this is a beautiful declaration of the lord krishna because we are all warriors and this is one teaching that we have to experience in our lives to be just an instrument in the hands of god there is one story in the in the gita in mahabharata the son of bima his name was uh, belasena he came before the war and he said i have the ability to finish the war with just one arrow and then everyone doubts him how can it be you have to prove then he get one arrow put some uh, kumkum red powder and then he ch chant one mantra and just throw that arrow and that arrow with the red kumkum came to the forehead of everyone who was doubting him and made just made a red mark everyone was astonished how could it be that and then lord krishna came and lord krishna say who who taught you to do this magic he say it was you and lord krishna didn't want to finish the war in one arrow men things need to be learned to happen so he says okay if i taught you this technique you have to give me the guru dakshina and then belasena say oh, of course just ask me and then lord krishna say i want your head so his head was cut off put in the pillar and he was just witnessing the whole war at the end of the war bhima that father and arjuna and others from pandavas were discussing i was the man power of this war i killed duryodhana these and they were saying no 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 i kill all these others they were fighting and say we are all partial lord krishna said let us ask to belasena whose head is in the, on the pole and he saw the whole war then they came and asked who was the man 
power of this uh, war. It was me, the father had said, no, no one of you. Before any one of you kill any person in the battle, I just saw one discos coming and twisting and killing and doing everything in the battle. So you all didn't do, did not do nothing in the war. They were a little bit frustrated. So he saw that everything that happened, happened by the Lord, not by the people. They were only the instruments. So this is another beautiful teaching. We should not carry the whole load on our backs. We should have this feeling of uh, union. Someone is working through us. Someone is doing things through us. Our ego has to diminish. Swami Vivekananda gave a beautiful declaration. He says, the feeling of responsibility in the human beings is more harmful than the scorching sun in the desert. It looks like it's a little bit strange, but whenever we feel responsibility in our shoulders, we forgot God and we intensify our egos and we suffer more and more. So Lord Krishna is saying here, Arjuna, I am doing everything. You just do your part, be an instrument. I will take care of the rest. Another aspect of the, this revelation, this experience of Arjuna, is uh, more towards the end of the experience. Arjuna was with repentance. He feels sad. Why? Because he remembered many times he maybe did not deal with the Lord properly. He said, oh, Krishna, I, come, I, I thought you were my friend. I make jokes with you. I mistreat you sometimes. Maybe I even humiliated you out of my ignorance. I please ask you, forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know really who you are. So he was repented. And what that means in our lives, this repentance of Arjuna and this ask of forgiveness. Guruji mentioned that uh, when we grow a little bit more and we have some experiences, we understand the value of the spiritual path. We understand the power of our meditation, our path, the power of our gurus. We regret, we repent thinking, I waste so much time in my life. I didn't listen to my guru. I didn't pay attention to what he said. I didn't watch my breath. I skipped my meditations. I waste so much time in useless things. I had a treasure in my hands. And what happened? My time went away. So Guruji says that with repentance, it's too late. We have to use our time now. Oh God, I forgot you. I pray only by mouth. I didn't care so much for you. I ignore you so much in my life. This is the repentance house of all of us. Whenever you see the value that we had or we have in our hands, God, Masters, Kriya Yoga. So Guruji says, we have to use our treasure before we repent, before we regret that our life is gone. I waste so much time. And out of completely humility, Guruji says, more and more I perceive the greatness of my Guru. I perceive my unworthiness of receiving so much from him. And also I perceive how much I was unable to recognize and give the value of the company of my master. Can you imagine coming this from Guruji, our master? what we are doing with our lives. We have to use better before we start to repent. Time is flowing. So this is also a beautiful part for us to think about, about this 11th chapter, this experience, divine experience of Arjuna. And then after these aspects, this uh, vision fades away. Arjuna is asking because of of course, a little bit of fear asked to see Lord Krishna again. And then Lord Krishna says, out of love, 
I show this to you. And then at the end of this chapter, he tells Arjuna how he can have this experience. So this experience of Arjuna was like a, a chocolate for a child. Yes, you are coming the right way. Have some experience, have some more joy, some more motivation to proceed. Otherwise, Gita will finish here. It would be the final experience. So then Lord says, you have to continue. And the way to reach me, so it's verses 53, 54, and 55, the last one. It's not through reading the Vedas or scriptures. It's not through penance, austerity. It's not through charity. It's not the way. Then he comes to the next verse. You can come to me alone through single mind devotion. And then he mentioned three aspects. You can know me, you can see me, and you can enter into me. Arjuna in this chapter only saw the Lord, the divine cosmic form. But Arjuna was so scared, he did not enter into the Lord. He saw him and he knew him in some aspect. But here Lord Krishna is saying one more aspect. You have to practice and continue your journey to reach the goal. Enter into me. It's not more a state of duality. I am seeing the Lord. I became one, merged in the Lord. It's very beautiful. And then in the last verse, this last verse, uh, Sri Shaniyal Mahashaya say that is the most beautiful verse of Gita that contains the essence of Gita. And if we follow this verse, we will get it. So in this last verse, Lord Krishna mentioned the five things, five attitudes, five actions that we should have in our lives to reach this state of permanent connection and union immersion completely and they are the first uh, word that we say mat karma krut that means all your actions should be dedicated to me you should have more spiritual actions during the day if possible to sing to chant to do japa to meditate but apart from that every action you do in the world remember and offer to me this is the first part then it will not have a division that this is spiritual this is not spiritual everything is for my lord the second uh, aspect the second attitude that we should develop in our life is mat paramam consider me as the supreme goal i have to be the number one of your life i have to see you and everywhere god should be the center of our lives this is the second aspect mat paraman consider god as your supreme goal everything you are doing offer to him with the goal of coming closer to him the third aspect of this steps mat bhakta what should what does it mean be devoted to me love more me establish one special and permanent relationship with me what does it mean we have to desire to invite more god in our lives in every moment just thinking one lover think thinking in her or his beloved let's say he is alone and then he goes to a beautiful place, then he thinks, oh, it would be so nice if she would be with me, she would enjoy so much. Then he goes and takes some nice food and say, oh, she loves so much this food. I wish she would be here with me. Or she, he reads something or she sees something, only remembering him or her all the time. This should be our attitude in our lives. The willing to share, every aspect of our lives with god and the masters every aspect not only the goods every moment of our lives bring devotion sharing inviting god in our lives this is the third aspect the fourth aspect is uh, 
Sangabar Jitaha. What does it mean? You have to live. You have to do your responsibilities in the world. You have to have relationship with others. You have to have family, friends, what else? But you should not create any emotional attachment. Live, have friends, be social whenever you need, but do not create any emotional attachment because we are going to forget God and you are going to create bondage. Live, but do not be attached. This is the fourth part, fourth step. And the last one is the Nirvairaha Sarva Bhutteshu. This is beautiful, but it's also a challenge for us. We should not create any feeling of enmity towards people. Anyone, doesn't matter. All living beings, we should not create. We should not pollute our hearts and minds with negative thoughts and thinking of others. And Guruji goes a little bit further. He says, even if someone hurts you, even if someone do really bad things for you, you should not nurture any bad feeling, any negative thinking towards that person. Because our heart is the abode of the Lord. Our hearts are the temple of the Lord. So if you are willing to have God in our hearts, we cannot have any impurity. We cannot have any negative. We have to take care. So not to create any animosity, enmity towards any living beings. Just to think about. And Guruji gave the example of Jesus. Tortured, humiliated, crucified. Oh God, they don't know what they do. Of course, we have to start from some point. Just to think about these five things and let us try to apply in our lives. Gita must, should be very practical in our lives. It's not just memorizing verses and understanding what Arjuna did or not. But how can I apply this in my daily life? How can Gita be extremely practical in my life? How can I have jnana and vidyana? knowledge but how can i apply this, apply this in my life and this is the way that the master show us they are trying to show how to live Gita day right and then here we end this 11th chapter let us close our eyes Om Tapsariti Srimad Bhagavadi Tapsu Upanishadsu Brahma Vijayam Yoga Shastre Sri Krishna Arjuna Sambhade Vishwaru Padarshana Yogo Namai Kadasho Jaya Thus here ends the 11th chapter The Yoga of Cosmic form reviews. Let us just keep our eyes closed a little bit more. Allowing this information to go inside, to digest, to later on to apply. Please keep watching your breath and just let to listen one song from Yoga Nandaji. I will sing thy name, I will drink thy name, and get full drunk over thy name. I will sing thy name. I will drink thy name and get all drunk with thy name. Om Guru, 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 Om Guru,
between times and get so drunk away thy name. I will sing thy name, I will drink thy name and get so drunk away thy name. Om Guru, 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 Om my Guru, come to me, come to me, oh, come to me. Oh, my Guru, come to me, come to me, oh, come to me. Oh, Guru, Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Are you sing thy name? Are you drink thy name? And get so drunk, oh, we thy name. I will sing thy name, I will drink thy name, and get full from the thy You gave me this precious life to me, this gift of human life. You gave me the desire to know thee. Oh, Master, please help me to use this life in the most productive manner. Help me to love thee. Help me to listen, to follow thy instructions. Please do not let me repent later on. Let me use this life to love thee to serve thee everywhere. I just want to please help me to really have this goal as the primary thing in my life. Let the air, all other things be just secondary. Help me, guide me, discipline me, remove my negativities. You are the owner of my life. Please take this load from me. Let me feel only by protective arms guiding me on the way. I bow to you with love. Let the blessings of God and the Masters be upon us all, all the time, and that we may grow the spirit of path, spirit of journey, and have more and more the experience of the presence of the Lord in us and everywhere. I bow to you all with gratitude. Oh, um, thank you all for this opportunity and we we'll meet again in the next chapter. Jai Guru.